Because he's nailed to a cross. Tell me about those legs. Tell me his legs are pillars of marble. I mean strong as an ox. Strong as could be. Set up on sockets of fine gold. She said, when I see him, she said, I see his facial features. She said, I see his firm features. Because sometimes life is hard. And there takes more than just the beauty of the facial features. Oh, there but it takes the blessedness of the firm features to keep going. And he kept going. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Our heavenly bridegroom, who being in the form of God, God had not robbed people with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon the form of certain made the likes of man. And humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He bare our sins in his own body on the tree. He did it all. He went all the way. He could have called some legions of angels. And they could have come and took him off that cross. They could have come and whooped all of those soldiers. But did he call 12 legions of angels? Did he call anybody down? He did it all by himself. By himself, he purged our sins. And by himself, one day he's come again. Thank God for that. He's not putting on the angels to come back for us. Oh, he's coming back for us. You need a hand to plow. You need a heart that wants to work. You need stamina to stand. Our heavenly bride, who did it all. He had battles. He had battles. Don't think he didn't have battles. He had a battle with Satan. You know, over in, I think it's Matthew 4, when he was in that, where he was in the, the, in the garden, as he was in that garden, and he fasted 40 days, in the wilderness, excuse me, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he had a battle with Satan. And Satan's twisting and manipulating the word of God to try to get Jesus to, to, call, to, to get somebody else to do the thing, to get him to bow down to Satan. He said, I can make it easy on you. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, he gets all of these things. He stood the test. There was a battle with Satan. But not only were there battles with Satan, there were battles with sinners. He suffered the contradiction of sinners against himself. Consider him. Consider him. But not only do I find that, he battled the saints. The saints. You might not remember this, but dear brother Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this unto me today. But what had happened just a little while later? Jesus says, Get thee behind me, Satan, because he said, Here it is. Peter got the big head and thought, I can rebuke the little one now. I said, hey, It's not going to happen. I'll go all the way with you. You're denying the cross. He gets on the cross and they all left. Only John was there with Mary. And then he had to leave. He took Mary to his house. But where were they? They fled. They fled because they did not want to be a Attacked by a Roman soldier. That gets him. And then Peter said, Well, I'm going to show up. But what did he do? He denied it three times. There were battles with the saints. Do you remember when the sons of thunder said, Call down light fire from heaven and burn them up? 
about the sinners. Now he says there he has to rebuke the saints. There were battles with the saints. Let me just say this. There's a battle that he had with the saints. The man Christ Jesus and the divine God Christ Jesus he had to make a choice in Gethsemane to say not thy, not my will but thine. His will as a man was in conflict with his will as God. I did always the things that pleased you. I know this has got to happen but in the reason way it has come past from me. Why? Because man, it does not want to die. And deity certainly does not want to be defiled. And he had to be made sin for us. He had to lose fellowship with the Father for us. The Father had to turn the lights out. There was a battle for sin. I will say this. Thank God he didn't just have facial features that are all together. Enough. But he has firm features that are all together. Enough. The wholeness of his firm features stayed faithful. Oh, because they were made of the finest building materials. He said, I read this here now. Here's what he says. He says, his countenance is as leaven, excellent as the cedars. The cedars of Lebanon were the best building materials out there. The best of all cedars, they were up on a high hill, they were up there in the greatest, most fertile part of, and they, he said, the, his countenance, talking about his whole being, from his facial features, his firm features, were as the cedars of Lebanon. I want you to understand this. Oh, he had the finest building materials. He wasn't built by the cedars of Lebanon. Oh no, the only way they could compare him. Because he was so much better than the, the best you can find out there for building materials. He had facial features, he had firm features, and he had fellowship features. His mouth is most sweet. His mouth is most sweet. Oh, she missed him. She missed the comfort that his mouth brought to her. Now, I am not being crude, but they were married. But she mentions it over here in, a, in, our, in, our, in our Bible, in the book of Song of Solomon. She mentions his kisses. Chapter 1, because I saved her. Or let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine. The comfort that she finds in those fellowship and time. She was sweet on her bride. She said, I miss the comfort that I find in the sweet time of fellowship with him. But not only do you find his mouth is the mouth of comfort, his most sweet, the fellowshipping feature. But his mouth is for conversation. As he speaks a word in season to him and to them that are weary. She wants to hear his voice. She longs after his fellowship that she had lost. Listen. She's looking for this. She's longing after this. I charge you, O oh daughters, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick of love. I want a fellowship with him. What is my beloved more than another beloved, O oh, thou first among women? What is thy beloved more than any but another beloved? Thou dost, that thou dost charge us. I mean, she tells him, she tells him, he is everything. He speaks words that are better words than anything else. The words of his mouth are as apples of gold on platters of silver. He is somebody. He is sweet. 
and he is mine. Oh, that's my beloved. Chapter or verses 8 and 9 tell us what she wants. Verses 10 through 16 tell us what he is. He's flawless. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's the fairest. He is altogether lovely. I ask you this. Here's what she says. Have you seen my beloved? Do you know who he is? Oh, you can recognize him. There's nothing wrong with him. Oh, there's nothing wrong with him. I, I, I can describe him to you better than you. And hey, let me say, you ought to be describing him to everybody. Do you tell others of your beloved? Let me say this. What you love is what you talk about. I mean, what's in the heart, the mouth, speaking. He is altogether loved. He'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind stays on him. He'll comfort you because he's the God of all comfort. He'll pour out grace because he's the God of all grace. He has the features that you need. When you need somebody to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or keep on going, fight the good fight of faith, he'll speak a word in season. When you need somebody who says, I've been touched with the feeling of your infirmities, I know what you're going through. I've been hurt, I've had heartaches, I've had heartbreaks. Oh, the fellowship that you can have with him. The fellowship. Do you know him? If you know him like she knew him, even when he and him and her were at odds with each other and separated from each other, she could go and tell everybody, I'm looking for him. That's all I want. I want him. I don't have him. I want him back. Help me find him. If you've not had no sweet time of fellowship lately, have you thought about him? Have you meditated on him? He is all together loving. If you don't know him, the heavenly bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die, now you can get to know him. All it takes is you bow your head and say, Dear God, I want to know him. Because he wants to know you more than you want to know him. He found her out there. And she was black. She was burned up in the sun. Can I say he found me black in my sin? But he took me in. I didn't deserve to be brought in to his banking table where his banner over me is love. I didn't deserve any of it. He's all together lovely. Why would he take time for me? Why would he take time for such as we are? Because not only is he all together lovely, he is all in all love. He loves you. Would you spend some time with me? Father, I thank you. 